Good evening and welcome to Breaking Today News right here on Switch TV. I am Lincoln Wambugwa. Our sign language interpreter is Teresia Washira. We have a lot in line for you tonight, but first, let's take a look at the headlines. Garissa Senator Yusuf Haji interred at Langate Muslim Cemetery. No, what he told us to do, he himself did. And that is the manner in which he lived his life. Nyachai excelled as an administrator and eventually as um, uh, uh, in, the, in, in the main civil service. And President Kenyatta, his deputy William Ruto and ODM leader Raila Odinga share podium at the burial of former cabinet minister Simeon Nyachai. More pain at the pump as fuel prices hike. You can now watch your favorite programs on the following platforms, Signet Zuku Channel 53 or Azam Channel 338. You can also catch our episodes on our website, www.switchtv.ke, Switch TV News on our YouTube channel, or download the Switch TV app on Google Play Store or the App Store. Now, on to stories making headlines. Senator Yusuf Haji, Senator Yusuf Haji has been buried today. Our senior reporter, Joel Charcher, was at Langata Cemetery and witnessed the burial ceremony. In Langata Muslim Cemetery, the ground was cleared with these caterpillars for the burial of the late Garissa Senator Yusuf Haji, in which leaders, friends and family streamed in for the final send-off, according to the Muslim faith. The ODM leader Raila Odinga and Deputy President William Ruto arrived at the cemetery a few minutes past 4 p.m. and several other politicians from both houses of parliament also arrived for the same. President Huru Kenyatta, who had earlier attended Nyachai's burial in Kisi County, but his convoy made its way here, where he was received by his deputy president William Ruto in Langata. From this house, his president Kenyatta, who addressed the mourners, termed Haji as a leader who had interests of his people and the country at heart. <laughs> za wananchi wa taifa hili letu la Kenya kiongozi ambaye amefanya kazi ya wananchi karibu miaka yake yote mpaka dakika yake ya mwisho ambapo alikuwa anawakilisha kaunti ya Garissa kama seneta wao Leaders mourned Haji at his home in Riverside Nairobi where they termed him as a leader who had a vision and was an exemplary leader that the Northern Kenya ever produced. Uh, he was my PC uh, in Mombasa, provincial commissioner. Uh, he was a very religious man, uh, a caring person, as well as he was accessible. Uh, he was helpful as well. So for me, I have lost an example. I have lost a father figure. I have lost an exemplary public servant. And this country has lost um, a patriot, but he has left huge lessons for us. You know that he chaired the BBI uh, team, and uh, he was a man that uh, spoke to the unity and the integrity of this nation. On behalf of the people of Dadaab and Garissa County, I wish to condole with the family of the late Mr. Haji uh, for the untimely demise. We pray for him, a place in general for those. We also pray for the family to have sabr and patience during this trying moment. We are sincerely sad as senators to lose Senator Yusuf Haji, who most of us, in our, when we were growing up, knew him as an administrator, provincial commissioner. But we have had the privilege, some of us here, to serve with him since 2013. Very articulate gentleman very solid gentleman. Many are saying the country has lost a sober leader whose contribution, especially in the Senate, where he was an active member, would be missed. Joel Chacha, Switch TV, Langata Cemetery, Nairobi. 
Thank you, Joel Chache. Garisa Senator Mohamed Yusuf Haji, who died earlier today at Aga Khan Hospital in Nairobi while receiving treatment, has been laid to rest at the Langate Muslim Cemetery. Haji, who last year served as a chairperson of the Building Bridges Initiative BBI Task Force, has been a highly respected leader and elder. Before his admission to hospital late last year, Haji had a hip injury in his house. Since then, according to the family, he has been in and out of hospitals. Up to his last moment, he served as the chairman of the Building Bridges Initiative Task Force. Haji, who is the father of Director General of Public Prosecutions, Nuruddin Yusuf Haji, had returned to the country on Saturday last week from Turkey, where he was taken in December last year for treatment after being believed to have collapsed at his Garissa home on September 29, 2020, injuring his hip. Prior to returning to the Senate seat in 2013 and winning, Haji served as a member in the Ministry of Defense and Homeland Security in the administration of the retired President Mwai Kibaki. In 2014, Haji oversaw the signing of a community peace agreement in Wajir and Mandera counties to end hostilities that persisted in the area. Prior to that, he served in the regional administration during the reigns of the late President Mze Jomo Kenyatta and the late Daniel Moy, where he served from the district commissioner to the governor. He will be remembered for his great leadership skills and knowledge of culture that enabled him to serve the country at great lengths. Yakundi Kelvin, Switch TV. Thank you, Nikuni Kelvin, for giving us the memories of the late Mzee Haji. Garissa residents moaned their Senator Mohammed Yusuf Haji, who has been laid to rest at the Langata Muslim Cemetery this evening. They described Haji as a father figure to the people of Garissa County, who loved peace and development in the northern Kenya County. Uh, the Senator died early today at Aga Khan Hospital while receiving treatment. Today, Garissa County, we have lost... Uh a very senior old man in the government, a religious man, a dedicated service man. We are mourning. We are praying condolences to his family. Tunaomba mheshimiwa huru apatia kwa heshima yake district ya Ijara kwa kwa sababu constituency constituency ya Ijara ndio sasa ili tujue kweli hiyo mtu Amitumikie chochote. Tunasema family yake poleni na tunaombea Mungu apeleke mahali pema pemoni. All other stories from a minister Simeon Nyachai has been described as a great patriot and administrator by leaders during his send-off at his Nyosia home in Kisi County. President Uhuru Kenyatta has renamed the Gusi Stadium to Simeon Nyachai Stadium as a tribute to the former politician Daniel Karioki reports. The three leaders who do not see eye to eye today shared a platform as they led the nation in mourning with the family of former minister Simon Nyachai. President Uhuru Kenyatta describing Nyachai as a man of integrity and dignity in his service to the nation. Talk about somebody who used to talk at people and do the opposite. No. What he told us to do, he himself did. And that is the manner in which he lived his life. Kenyatta announcing that Gusi Stadium name be changed to Simon Nyachai Stadium as a tribute to help in his remembrance. I've considered it fit to rename this stadium the Simeon Nyachai Stadium Kisi. And to ensure 
that this stadium is completed by the end of this year and to an international standard. Deputy President William Ruto calling Nyachai a great Kenyan and administrator and patriot who believed in straight talks and forgiveness. He chose a different route that instead of waiting to share what was there, he decided to create more. And that is why, with a humble portion meal, with a small bakery, he built a huge business empire. Former Prime Minister and ODM leader Rela Odinga says that Nyachai excelled as an administrator, having served with him in one cabinet. Rela reiterating that Mze Nyachai stood for what was right at all times and instilled the same virtues in leaders whom he worked closely with and others who came after him. Nyachai excelled as an administrator and eventually as um, uh, uh, in the... In, in the main civil service, as a permanent secretary, and finally as a cabinet minister. Political leaders at the funeral, however, kept off politics as wished by the family. Daniel Karioki for Switch TV. Thank you, Daniel Karioki. Former cabinet minister in the Moy administration, Simeon Chai, has today been laid to rest at his Nyosia home in Kisi during a private ceremony attended by close family members and friends. The burial followed a state funeral service at Kisi Stadium that was attended by President Kenyatta, his deputy, William Ruto, former Prime Minister Raul Odinga, Amani National Congress leader Musalia Mudevadi, as well as former Vice President Kalonzo Musyoka. The Council of Governors, through the speech read by Kisi Governor Jameson Ngoae, who is also the vice chair of the council, have praised the most extreme example of its kind of Mzenya Chai, who ensured the unity of the nation and offering employment to many through his entrepreneurship skills that contributed immensely to Kenya's economic growth. Mze was a leader who found inspiration in his accomplishments, a civil servant of repute, a political leader who championed the unity of the nation and his people. On his side, the wife leader Kalonzo Musioka remembered how Nyachai, together with former Prime Minister Raila Odinga, signed the coalition agreement before the initiation of the Kenya coalition during those times. 10 o'clock in the morning, out of Serena, we signed with Mzee Nyachai uh, the coalition agreement before NAC. That was uh, Senior Council Paul Mwete, the late Kiliku, and Mzee Nyachai. In the afternoon, um, we all know what happened. Uh, Kibaki Tosha, <laughs> and then, and then Kikaumana. ANC party leader Musali Medavidi also conveyed his condolences to Nyachai as a great man who held his head high in keeping the integrity and sanctity of civil service by contributing immensely into the closing files of Golden Buck's candle. So I went to Simon Nyachai's house, Mama Grace's house, and we went through that document. After that, I knew I had an ally, and when we went to cabinet, the decision to close the windows and the vichorochoros of Goldenberg was made. Nyachai died on February 1st at the Nairobi hospital, and his body was flown to Kisi on Sunday morning, where a brief church service was held at his rural home. From the civil service, he vied and won the Nyaribari church's seat on a canoe ticket in 1992, and Moy would appoint him the Minister of Agriculture and the Finance. Emmanuel Terer, Switch TV. Thank you, Emmanuel Terer. We are live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. On YouTube, we are live as Switch TV News. Send in your feedback to our SMS line, triple one, triple four, triple one, and at Switch TV. Can we now take a short commercial break? Stay tuned.
Welcome back and thank you for keeping it Switch TV. This week's episode of Know Your CEO, we get to interact with the CEO of Elite Edge Consult, William Morethi. Take a look. Ever want to know how a CEO sees his world? Then here's how. Apart from running an organization and strategizing, their key role is making sure there is money in the bank. Our CEO this week is Willie Murethy. He's a CEO of Elite Edge Consult, a firm that provides a wide range of financial advisory and management consulting to businesses. It also does projects management and auditing to other and other things. And he's going to tell us, help us understand how it all works. Thank you, Willie. Now, maybe briefly, you can tell us how, what is consultage? How do you ensure that there is money in the bank as a CEO? Thank you, Link, for having me. Anytime. Asante. Uh, well, uh, consulting basically um, works in a way that um, you have certainty on what you're doing, unlike uh, normal business operations. How yes. long have you been in this game? Well, um, not long enough, but uh, uh, since 20, 2016, we have been in this game since 2016. We've been structuring deals from, um, from then till now, and we keep honing our skills every now and then. Uh, many companies have collapsed, especially during this time of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. How have you stayed afloat? Is it that you had enough money in your account? Well, um, I would say even those who had enough money in their accounts, they've had an impact. Or rather, they've felt uh, a pinch of the, of the situation. What we've done to stay afloat is, you know, change of strategies. Uh, Elite Edge Consult yes. gives financial strength or troubleshoots uh, companies or individuals or clients who are having trouble with their finances. If Elite Edge was to consult with the government, how would you help the Kenyan government out of that debt quagmire? Um, well, I would say that um, it all depends on uh, the government borrowing uh, and what the borrowing is intended for. Actually, uh, not all uh, national debt is a bad debt because government borrowing is intended to put investments into economy that are supposed to be utilized in future. So uh, if we were to take up a role to advise the government, we'll you know, look at how to, how to reduce their, sp their spending uh, areas. Absolutely. Uh, one crucial maybe requirement that your company uh, has to undertake is maintain clients, maintain your clientele. How have you been able to achieve this? Maintaining your clientele. All right. You know, different organizations across uh, different industry sectors, they have different strategies of, um, of retaining their clientele. And um, in consulting, because we are a service-based uh, uh, institution, basically it's the aftercare, the after-service uh, upon meeting the client's goals. Are there certain tricks mm -hmm. that CEOs such as you use to ensure their companies do not fall? Well, <laughs> those are trade secrets, but since you ask, I'm mm -hmm. just going to let the car out of the park. Uh, well, I'd like to ask at this point, mm -hmm. where do you generate your ideas from? Is it books? Is it people, philosophers, movies? Um, we learn from, um, from past experiences, from mistakes that have been done by others, success stories. Um, which is the biggest risk you've taken and how did that leave you? What position did that leave you? Uh, oh, I would say the biggest risk, risk that I took um, was convincing my partners to become employees. When they left their eight to five jobs to become employees, of a startup they started up. Correct. They left their other engagements and came to become staff members now, of the Elite Edge Consult. Now, I'd like to know, apart from being a CEO, what do you do for fun? Well, I really, I have very limited time uh, for, you know, unwinding, but uh, every time I have some 
uh, you know, time to spare. I like, um, you know, listening to music. Can you say, are you a saver or a spender? Well, I think I'm a spender. <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't live behind a nice car. Every time I come across it. And you're not afraid of uh, uh, spending all your company's money. Well, really, this is actually what uh, uh, I put into consideration uh -huh. because I only spend what I've earned, and uh, I stick to that. Yes. Yes. Uh, final question. Mm. Uh, this one is, of course, off the hook. Uh, do you have a boys' club or guys, uh, guys like-minded uh, that you hang out with? Yes, I would say I have a close knit. Thank you, Willie. Yes. And thank you for being our CEO this week. Thank you the so much. The conversation continues me. next Monday. As of today, the fuel price guidelines went into play and Kenyans are not so pleased with the current price. Just a month after new tax introductions, Kenyans, especially motorists and low-income earners, are decrying lack of consideration by the government. Jean Kutunyi with more. Consequences of high fuel prices have started taking effect with motorists decrying losses. <laughs> Taxi drivers operating under taxi companies are proposing for a fee hike effective today. Biashara iko shita, iko shini. Na even now, na kuangalia katika hizi hub setu, even now nilikuwa na niwaandike size. Niwaambie either waongeze late sawa ama tuvikilie vingine. High petrol costs means hiked fare prices and public transport users will have to dig deeper into their pockets. Kenyans are looking at tough times ahead, considering they're still struggling to recover financially since the COVID-19 pandemic disrupted their source of incomes. A big number lost jobs and others were put on unpaid leave, while most experienced a pay cuts. Reporting for Switch Business, my name is Joan Kutun. Thank you, John Coutinho. The financial market has been performing poorly during the pandemic. In 2021, the stocks are looking up and Mir Thakar, a trader and strategist, tells us which shares are best to buy. Uh, telco, it's now a mobile money business. In fact, it's just a few steps away from becoming a full-blown bank. Uh, in, uh, you know, financial year 13, its M-Pesa revenue was just 19% of service revenue. Today, it's 33% of uh, service revenue. This means that the money that's available for paying dividend is so much more now. Would, uh, also look at the banking sector. Yes, over 50% of the banking sector loans have been restructured. For example, equity banks loan loss provisions increased eight times to 14.8 billion in quarter three 2020 from 1.9 billion. I, I would say despite uh, huge profits in uh, alcohol and tobacco, these are subject to whims of uh, legislators and subject to constant government intervention and manipulation of the laws and regulations just falling short of extortion, you know. So anything that has a lot of government intervention, that's an area I would not invest in. From the sports desk, Paris Saint-Germain star Rafinha says that it is time for the club to put the Barcelona nightmare to bed. The club's go head-to-head -head in the Champions League last 16 at Camp Nou on Tuesday.